Greetings, fellow citizens of the Ubooboverse. <laughs> it's just me, Uncle Murray. <laughs> Well, oh my days, let me tell you. I must have hit a nerve or something, because there's all sorts of people that are upset with me, because a dummy like me had the nerve to talk about cosmology and evolution and wrap them all into the same package and for believing in an imaginary sky god and a silly book full of fables and stuff like that. And that's okay. We don't have to agree with each other about everything, right? But you don't gotta be such a stinker when you leave a comment, you know. The way some of them people was talking, you'd think that I just pinched their mother on the tushy or something. <coughs> Excuse me. But anyways, there was a couple of comments that really stuck out to me in that first evolution video I'd done. L. Archivelli said, Now, was there a particular reason why anyone should believe in or pray to a god that does absolutely nothing except watch people suffer? And Jason Cartmill says that he don't understand why if there is a god, then why didn't he make us like computers? Because he says that computers never miscommunicate. But when they do, they spit out an error that tells you exactly what went wrong. But humans miscommunicate all the time, and they have misperceptions and stuff like that. And if I can figure out how to do it, I'll leave a link to their comments down in the description, you know, so you just can read them for yourself. Because it's real important when you're talking about people that you try as hard as you can to understand exactly what they mean. And I'm trying to get better at doing that myself, too. Because for one thing, twisting people's words around to make it seem like they're saying something that they ain't, well, that ain't a real nice thing to do, you know. I, I think that's dirty pool. But another reason you shouldn't do that is because it kind of defeats the whole purpose of talking to somebody, you know. If you misrepresent what the other person is saying, then whatever point you're trying to make ain't going to amount to a hill of beans. <coughs> Excuse me. So if I understand them two comments right, they're asking... If God is so great, well, then how come he lets so much bad stuff happen? And why wouldn't God make us think like computers? Because computers don't make so many mistakes. And them two questions are so close to each other that they could be brothers. Because both of them have something to do with love, free will, and sin. And I was talking a little bit about this with my buddy Larry a while back. But in John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And in Matthew 22, 37 to 40, a lawyer was asking Jesus, you know, hey, what's the greatest commandment? And it says, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. And Jesus was quoting from the Old Testament, uh, Deuteronomy 6.5 and Leviticus 19.18. So God loves us, and he wants us to love him, and he wants us to love each other. But there's a tricky thing about love, you see. If it's going to be real love, then it's got to be a choice, you know. If you tell me that you love me, well, that oh boy, that, that feels real nice, you know. Yeah, yeah I like that, because it feels real good to hear somebody say that they love you, right? But let's say that you don't have no choice. Let's say that I know that I could do anything to you or say anything to you at all, and you'd still say that you love me. Well, do you think that it would still make me feel good? Well, no, it wouldn't, because I knew that you was just saying it because you had to. You see, the only reason it means anything to me that you love me is because I know that you don't have to. You could choose not to love me or even to hate me, but instead, you chose to love me. And that's part of what free will is. That in order to experience real love, there's got to be the option to not love. And that's why God didn't make us to think like no computers. Because we couldn't love them and we couldn't love each other because computers can't love. They just do whatever you program them to do. But when you give people the option to love or to not love, a lot of people are going to make the choice to not love. Well, not a lot of people. Everybody makes the choice to not love at different times and at different situations. And you might think, well, that all depends on what you mean by love. And you got a point. And it just so happens that one of my favorite parts of the Bible gives a pretty good definition of what love is. It's 1 Corinthians 13. I, I talked about it before. Some people call it the love chapter. And I'll read the whole thing this time in, in case you never heard it before and in case you ain't got no Bible because I think it's real important. The Apostle Paul wrote it and he uses the word charity. And I said this before, you know, it, it don't mean the charity like uh, given to a charitable organization or something like we do today. No, no, it means something different, you know, and, and this is from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. It says, charity, in a general sense, love, benevolence, goodwill, that disposition of heart which inclines men to think favorably of their fellow men and to do them good. 
In a theological sense, it includes supreme love to God and universal goodwill to men. So when Paul talks about charity, that's what he means. So here's what he says, 1 Corinthians 13. Though I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not charity, I am become as a sounding brass or a tinkling cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains and have not charity, I am nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, and though I give my body to be burned and have not charity, it profiteth me nothing. Charity suffereth long and is kind. Charity envieth not. Charity vaunteth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, thinketh no evil, rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth, beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, endureth all things. Charity never faileth, but whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. Whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. For we know in part, and we prophesy in part, but when that which is perfect is come, then that which is in part shall be done away. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then shall I know even as also I am known. And now abideth faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of these is charity. And I think we can all agree that we ain't always been loving according to them definitions. So when you give people the option to be unloving or unkind or selfish or evil, they're going to take it from time to time. Because it's easier than choosing to love and to do the right thing. You know, it can be real tempting. And that's why there's so much suffering and evil in the world. Because of them times that people choose with their own free will to do all sorts of nasty things. And like I said before, I ain't no exception. I've done plenty of bad stuff. I've been selfish and impatient and greedy and mean. And I've lied and stolen and done all sorts of stuff that I know I shouldn't have done. And all the pain and suffering that I caused, I caused. It's my fault that I've done all that stuff. It ain't God's fault. And all that bad stuff that happened to the Jews during the war, God didn't do that. Hitler and his pals did all of that. And you might think, well, God let it happen. He could have at least stopped it, you know. He could have kept them from doing it in the first place. And I used to think the same thing too. But if we have free will, but God only stops us from doing the bad stuff, then that ain't free will. So if God gives us free will and we abuse it, then he gots to punish us for that, you know. For all the pain and the suffering that we cause other people. You know, he says, you know, hey, I gave you free will so that I could love you and you could love me and so that all of you could love each other. And what did you do? You chose to hurt other people and hurt yourselves and hurt me. So I got to punish you. And all that bad stuff we do but, or the good stuff that we don't do. Well, God calls that sin. And he got to punish people for doing all the bad stuff or he wouldn't be a very just God, you know, if you let people get away with doing all that bad stuff. But now he's got a problem, see. He's got to be fair and just and punish sin, but he still loves all of us and he still wants all of us to be able to be with him forever. So what can he do? Ah, he can still punish sin, but he can take the punishment himself, see? Here's an illustration, and maybe you heard this before, maybe not, but I think it's a pretty good one. Let's say you got to go to court because you broke a bunch of laws, right? And you're standing in court and the judge says, hey, it says you broke a bunch of these laws. Is that true? And you say, yes, Your Honor, uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, I, I broke all of them laws. And the judge says, well, if I'm going to be a fair judge, I got to punish you for breaking them laws, don't I? And you say, yeah, I guess so. And he says, well, I find you guilty, and I'm sentencing you to pay a gazillion dollars for breaking all of them laws. But then in walks this other fella, and he says, excuse me, Your Honor, but if you don't mind, I'd like to pay this guy's fine for him. Would that be okay? And the judge says, well... The fine is getting paid, and if you want to pay for it, then I guess that'd be okay. And so the other fella pays the fine for you. And so now you owe this other fella instead of the court. And you say, oh boy, mister, I, I sure appreciate you paying my fine, but, but I ain't got no money to pay you back. And he says, oh, that's okay. I, I know you ain't got no money. Just come and work for me and do what I tell you, and we'll call it even, okay? And in case you haven't put the two and two together, that fella that paid your fine in the courthouse, that's Jesus. 
So why is there so much suffering and why didn't God make us computers? Because computers ain't got no free will. And if you ain't got no free will, you can't love. But if you can choose to love, you can choose to sin. And God got to punish sin, but he still loves us. So he figured out how to take the punishment for us so we could all be with him and we could all love each other forever. And all we got to do is follow Jesus. So now let me read John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And because Jesus done that, we belong to him now. In 1 Corinthians 6, 19 to 20, Paul says, What, know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which ye have of God, and ye are not your own? For ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. And I don't know about you, but I don't think I could find a better deal anywhere else. But I hope that helps to answer them questions of why there's so much suffering in the world and why we ain't made like computers. And I think maybe that's a good place to stop because I don't want to just keep on talking forever. And if you liked what I had to say, be a pal and subscribe to my channel, would you? And give me some thumbs up and let me know what you think in the comments and share this video with everybody that you can think of. Okay, so that's it and that's all and I'll see you next time, okay? Bye-bye. Excuse me.